away from my 10th month post bunionectomy operation that I had on my right foot. If you've been following my channel and following my story, then you'll know that I had a lepidomous bunionectomy. I had a Taylor's bunionectomy and I also had a hammer toe correction early stage. We went ahead and got that out the way too. So in my older years or later down the road, I won't have any issues. And I want to go ahead and give you an update. And I'm early. Anyway, so we'll just jump right into it. So on December 13th, last month, a few weeks ago, I actually saw my doctor and it felt good. I hadn't seen my doctor in probably about five, going on six months. And after this journey, you know, Dr. Brazashan has become like a friend. So it was good to see him. And I came in, I saw the staff. Uh, a couple new faces, some familiar faces, and we did the x-rays because we always do x-rays. And uh, it was it felt good. We did the x-rays. I came in. Then he came in. We spoke and everything. And then he showed me those beautiful x-rays that are all nice and healed. The bone structure looks amazing. There are no more spaces in between my bone and the actual pin that's in them on the right side of the foot. If you've been following my story, you know that one is where I had the delayed bone healing on the right side of my foot. It's completely healed. It probably has been for some time, but with uh, my new job that I had, I couldn't necessarily get a lot of time off in the beginning because I was in training. So I had to postpone my appointment like twice, unfortunately, which I regret, but it, it's completely healed. It's completely healed. I got cleared for absolutely everything. I'm in good standing with him. And another thing that happened I thought was pretty funny was that he said that, remember, if you follow this series, if you follow my channel, I did do a video about my estrogen bone healing system that I'm always talking about, which was a pivotal factor in healing my foot from the delayed bone healing. He said that Burke actually saw the video and sent him the link. I thought that was pretty funny. I didn't even know he knew about my channel by Shanae's Law. If y'all are watching these days, then you better like, comment, and subscribe, or at least share to all your patients who are going to get that estrogen. And if estrogen bone healing systems does need a face, you know, if y'all need a little brand spokesperson, I'm available. I am available. Anyway, thought that was pretty cool. I thought that was pretty dope. And uh, which is, I was going to bring it up because as I've been telling y'all, when I do get the left foot, you know, when I'm ready for that, I will be vlogging. So it's good that he's already aware and he'll know what to expect the next time he sees me rolling up with the camera. And so he did mention that as well. He started examining the left foot, kind of figuring out what he's going to do differently this time. And we kind of just discussed the next steps. I honestly think this was probably one of the most complicated cases he has had due to my delayed bone healing and the way we had the pen put in. But hopefully with the left foot being the lesser of the two evils originally, hopefully it won't be as crazy as the right foot's healing journey has been. But we will see. Only time can tell. But I did get cleared for all activity. He said I'm good to go. And it just felt good. This has been a journey. You know, I've known my doctor for over a year now, maybe a year and four months. And, you know, I think he felt good to see me up and at it, hearing that I'm back to doing Zumba. Then I'm back doing all the activities that I was doing before I started having the problems. Because remember, prior to my surgery, for probably five months, five or six months, I could barely walk. That plantar fasciitis tore me up. My plantar fasciitis was real. I had issues. I couldn't walk. And my job, I was on my feet. I was a picker. And you got to pick. You got to you gotta make your coins. So I'm just so glad to be out of that, out of that hell that I was in. Also... He did inform me that the way that he fixed my lapidomous bunionectomy on the first metatarsal, you know, the big toe, that, that actually improved my arch. My bone structure is very flexible, and because it's now pinned and it can no longer just move all willy-nilly about, it actually is going to help keep the suspension underneath my arch together, which explains why I've had no more arch problems with the right foot. Now, I think I spoke to y'all about this in uh, my eighth month update. I still get some stressful situations underneath the left arch of the foot. Sometimes it tightens up and I have to just stretch it out and then it goes away. I explained that to him as well. And he brought that to my attention that the way that the right foot has been fixed, 
it actually helped out my art. So I'm very happy about that. I do not want to be totally flat footed around here. I don't think nobody wants to be flat footed. If you're not born flat footed and you're a person whose art just collapsed and it happens to you, don't nobody want that life. Because I can tell you that was a lot of misery and a lot of pain for me. People who know me personally saw me suffer for a very long time. But I'm very happy that to know that that did help me. And that just lets me know that I made the best decision for me ultimately was to have that foot surgery. I have no regrets. So. I did want to speak on something else that helped me out along my journey that I haven't mentioned thus far. I had a lot of FMLA paperwork. I had a lot of medical bills. I had a lot of paperwork to keep up with. If you're, if you're about to have this surgery, I think this is a great way to keep up with all of your paperwork while you are down and out because the last thing you need to do is be stressed out over your job, your finances, or find the paperwork that you need at a later date while you're on a knee scooter, a walker, maybe even a cane, who knows. I wanna show you guys how I put all of my paper, paperwork and stored them. Here is actually where I kept all of my FMLA paperwork. Remember I told you every time I went to the doctor, they had to sign my paper off and say, hey, she'll be, she's coming back to the doctor at this date and they had to fax it into the FMLA team at my job. So I kept all of those paperwork in here. And they do add up because every time I will go and they will fax that in, they would email me the e-paper, but then they will also mail forms in. And I just wanted to keep me a copy of everything in case some stuff hit the fan and I had to, you know, show up on my paperwork. Now, in terms of my medical bills, I kept them all here. I told y'all about these poly folders. Y'all thought I was playing. This makes life so much simpler. And as you can see, it says insurance. Health, dental, 401k, etc. So I already had this and I keep up with everything. It's in your EOB, your explanation of benefits every time you go to the doctor. I already had one, but this saved me so much pain and suffering. I was able to keep up with all my expenses, make sure that they weren't trying to charge me twice for something or charge me incorrectly. I was able to keep up with everything by having it just in those two spots. So definitely if you're going to go on surgery, put all your FMLA paperwork in a separate one because this is kind of like a separate situation and it's temporary. But definitely have your poly folder in real life. Have your poly folder for all your medical bills. You should have one anyway just as an adult because being grown, you accumulate a lot of paperwork. So that definitely helped me out. And I just wanted to share that with you all just in case you're about to have this surgery. Organization is key. I definitely separated my bills, all my paperwork, and I kept it all together and I kept it near me. That way, every time I got it, I could file it away and know exactly where it is without stressing. So my essence of bone healing. At this point, the doctor did just basically kind of say, I don't have to use it anymore. You know, and so I haven't. And I remember the last time I spoke to one of the nurses, I am doing the surveys with them. So now I have to actually take it and mail it back in its prepaid little envelope so they can do research on it. They're going to gather all the technology and the data from it and use it in their case study. And I think they do give you like an incentive, but I'll do that anyway, just because it's, I do believe in a product. And I'm no longer going to use it. 10 months is going to be in about four days. So I stopped using it, but I'm definitely going to use it on my left foot. And the nurse did say they're going to send it back to me. They just want to get the data for research purposes and send it back on in. Walking. I've been walking seven months. One month in the boot, every day gets better, kind of like I told you in my eighth month. I no longer lose a balance, really. I still have to be careful. It's more so on maybe the right side of the foot. It's still kind of stiff, but I'm still moving it around just to keep it loose and not stiffen up. But it hasn't been a year yet officially, so that might still be expected. But I'm still being conscious of my surroundings as I walk. When it's raining, when it's muddy, it's been raining a lot here in Tennessee. And that mud, I'm telling you, I almost slipped up yesterday. It was dark out there. I got out the car. And it, was, woof, it, was, it, was, it was about to be bad. It was about to be a really horrible time, but... I got through it. And another thing is, even though after I got out of the boot and I was cleared to drive again, I actually had to go right back to work. I do have a Garmin Vivo Fit and I have been managing to get my 10,000 steps a day and I spread it out. So it's not 10,000 steps in one setting. I do take it easy. I do take it easy. It has gotten better, but I will try 
to work out in the morning if I could or work out at night after work. But I have to get it spread it out across the day. I don't want to do too much because too much of it does make the foot swell up a little bit. The swelling is not as bad as it used to be, but I don't want to test how far I can get swollen up. I don't want to see that. So I just think everything in moderation because if I am on it too long, it does swell up a little bit. Not as bad as it used to, but it's there. I don't want to provoke it. And I'm still wearing my foot orthotics. I'm still wearing sturdy shoes and boots. I did wear a boot with a little bit of a heel on it. I'll probably start doing that. And since he did clear me for everything, I could probably wear heels now. I do remember he said after a while I can. I'm going to explore that. We'll see. I've also been doing my daily stretches to avoid my plantar fasciitis symptoms. I think uh, as long as I keep that up, I won't have the problems that I once had before, especially with the left leg because the left foot is not fixed yet and I don't want to make it worse. I don't want to irritate it. I don't want those symptoms coming back. So I'm just going to do whatever it takes to make sure that I'm doing everything okay. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm stretching daily to avoid any more problems because I don't need no more problems. Don't need no more exercise. I'm still doing cardio. I'm still doing Zumba. I'm still doing weight training with five pound weights. I don't overdo it. I do my weight training with five pound weights. Still use my resistance bands and stretching. Stretching is so important. What I've noticed is stretching when you get out of the bed in the morning is the best. Even if you're still in the bed, just stretch, touch your toes, just stretch it all out, stretch it all out. And, you know, just kind of meditate with it. Just move and stretch and then get out of the bed. Get out of the bed, move around, stretch some more, stretch while you're brushing your teeth. It doesn't matter. Just stretch like that early. Throughout the day is nice too, but just stretch your whole body out in the morning. I think for me that's working a lot better because I have been focused on getting my lower body toned up to where it was prior to the surgery and the recovery and the bed rest. That was a lot. So I'm really focusing on getting that back together. Still maintaining a healthy diet, eating a lot of greens, still taking my vitamins, my supplements. And I am starting to feel the strength return. I did realize three months, none weight bearing on the right leg, uh, four months taking it easy. It was going to take at least four months to get it back to the par. And now I'm kind of starting to see where my body is toning back up, where I'm snapping back, if you will. But I do feel the strength coming back and it does feel good. The stairs are just, it's not a problem. It's not a problem anymore. The scars on my foot are still looking good. As you saw in part eight, part six, I'm still using cocoa butter, still using my prescription creams. I think as long as you take care of your foot, as long as you care and you take great care of it, you won't have a problem. Of course, time heals everything, but you do have to put the effort in. You can't think, oh, it's just gonna happen. No, you have to really put some effort into it. So cocoa butters, prescription creams, aloe vera. I still don't use Madarma. I don't think I need to because I'm going to show you a picture of my foot. Y'all might not be ready for this. You know what? Whatever. I'm going to show you right now. Foot. This is the right side. This is where the X is. The X is actually about right here. Shout out to DMX. Look at that. 10 months in. This is what it's looking like. Look at that. The middle is just right there. The toes. You can barely even see where the toes had a scar. And of course, right here along the side, I only have one pin right here. So it's looking pretty good, I must say. Toes barely have any scars showing. And this is like the darkest scar on the whole foot. So overall, I would say I am very, very pleased with these results thus far. See, I told y'all it was looking good. It's looking good, ain't it? <laughs> so driving, I'm still using my handicap placker. I'm very thankful. It depends on how high the curb goes up. But working on my lower body strength, that's reducing as well. So I don't always have to go to the lower section of the curb by the handicap section. I can kind of walk up a little bit more now. I'm not going crazy, but I am testing it. I want to see what my strength is looking like these days. Still driving in sturdy shoes and boots. Haven't drove in heels yet. I do have boots with wedge heels on them. I will try that. And I'll let y'all know in my year update how that goes. But that's working out well for me. Driving long distances. 
not feeling any pain feels good. That's been instances where I've had to drive across town from work to get my bonded retainer fixed across town and I had to have any pain, you know? So I think that's a good step in the right direction. And my overall healing. My estrogen bone healing system was definitely a key player and a key factor in getting me back on my feet. Like I've said, if you've watched the videos, we don't even have to explain it anymore. Definitely a healthy diet and my definitely a healthy diet and my vitamin supplements have been instrumental in my recovery. And those was magnesium, zinc, and calcium, along with everything else I take as well. And a positive mindset, staying focused, staying proactive, staying on top of it. You have to stay on top of it. Again, these things are going to just happen vicariously. Like, you really have to do it. It's not going to happen for two to two sleep by chance. None of that. Be proactive. This is your life. This is your foot. And if you want the change, you've got to be the change you want to see. My doctor even told me he wishes all his patients were like me. Well, doc, I'm one of a kind, just like the shirt says. <laughs> seriously it's your foot why won't you take that seriously i'm too young to be having these problems as it is i was trying to nip all this in the butt before i do get married and have kids and have businesses i can't do that with some messed up feet i got dreams and goals so you have to care just like on my videos on this channel getting a house getting a car getting out of debt you have to care about your life mind body and soul these days since it's going better i more so focused on just toning up just get my body back right, just toning, being able to do things that I wasn't able to do six months ago. That's pretty much my goal at this point. So I'm just looking forward to getting my left foot fixed and rehabilitating my body to its highest capacity, maybe even better than what it was prior to surgery. So thank you guys so much for watching and checking in on this 10 month update. Make sure that you've seen all the videos in this playlist so you can understand what I'm talking about because you could have just wandered up on this video and not know what was going on so make sure that you were checking all these end cards that I put in these videos so you can know what's up with me so you all have a wonderful day have a happy new year stay focused annihilate your goals and I'm going to see you guys next time make sure that you like comment and subscribe because it is the law around here and I'll see you guys in my next video Thank <laughs> you.